Hey. Today we got a nice little, oh, well, little little stack of comics. It'll be probably, probably somewhat of a quick one. I figure I'll do a little filler beforehand. Uh, went to see Abigail. I don't know if I mentioned that yet or not. The vampire, little creepy girl vampire movie, and in the back corner they actually had the screamer popcorn buckets. They didn't have when we went to see Ghostbusters. So I'm like, yeah, got to get a screamer bucket. <laughs> but, but a fact. <laughs> like, I always wonder about that because he's a ghost. So he doesn't poop. And he wasn't a ghost, I'm assuming, prior to being a ghost. So why does he need a butt crack? Uh, if you're not pooping, it's like, you gotta just round it off. And just, that would make sense. But yeah. <laughs> it's like, someone's got some butt issues. <laughs> but I, I'm like, I got this Grogu plush that I'm not, I'm not big on plushies. And I'm like, well, that'll probably fit perfectly. And the first time I put them Head first, but it doesn't have feet, so it doesn't look good with feet. <laughs> Pop him out of his, rip out his teeth. And I put him face down, and that didn't look that great. So then I, I had to go this route. A little payback to Grogu for when he eats the frogs. <laughs> But yeah, I thought that was kind of fun. So, interesting way to, to display. I could put them sideways like, help me! <laughs> I'm being eaten. <laughs> that there new little thing that will be in our background. And then we stopped at a Goodwill store. The wife likes to go through that in St. Finney's every now and then. And I like to just wander through the kids' books and stuff and see if there's any graphic novel. Any, like, dog man books, cat man, things like that, that I don't have. Something that I can pick up. And I seen this, which doesn't even look like it was red. It's a nice, very nice condition. Star Wars, Darth Vader and Son. It was actually really enjoyable and fun. I don't want to give away too much from it, but it's by Jeffrey Brown. And you see all the basics and teaching them how to ride a bike, eating breakfast together, using the force, and uh, playing with a lot of different parts of the Star Wars history throughout here. Going to the zoo, meeting all the Star Wars creatures as they're locked up in a zoo. Uh, gonna dip in the uh, garbage pit of the Death Star, <laughs> and then he, Luke is always asking questions about the Death Star and stuff like that throughout here and stuff. But this one cracked me up a lot at the theater. This isn't the toy you're looking for. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> As he's trying to get a Jar Jar Binks toy. But yeah, this is well done. Uh, great little quick read. Lots of little fun parodies of the Star Wars adventures throughout here. And uh, yeah, fun artwork, fun characters, fun on everything, seeing the dark side and the light side, working together, trying to work together. Civilized. But yeah. <laughs> and it's Goodwill. I think children's books are $1.50. So, buck and a half is originally a $15 book. And yeah, it looks like it's in mint condition. Never touched. Never read through. Yeah. So oh, that was a nice little pickup that we got. 
anything anymore. I got it. Let me clean these piles up. You know, all the comics we've reviewed put away. I got three stacks of them right now. Plus a stack that's going on eBay and everything. So, yeah, Elvira meets HP Lovecraft, number two. And in this issue, they uh, search for the Nepr- They're still on the search for the real Necronomicon. And they know of one at a library. They go to the library. The two gals at the library agree to take him down. Take Elvira and H.P. Lovecraft's spirit down to the Necronomicon and check it out. It's down in a special room. And you got the three goofy, goofy nerds that are chasing after him, trying to get ahead of the game. Trying to get their hands on the Necronomicon. And, again, this one has some issues, like the first one. But it's kind of fun because we get to see the head librarian transform into, like, a demon-type character. And uh, we find out why, why she's there at the library, why she's so obsessed with the Necronomicon and stuff like that. But I'm not going to give all that away. You're going to have to read it for yourself but yeah here's a picture of her in her demon-esque style form yeah the story's picking up not doing too bad i'm enjoying it i will keep following even though i'm not a big hp i'm not really into hp lovecraft and those stories, or those style stories, but the next one I stopped at my uh, buddy from high school that has two shops close by, comic shops, and he had a number one Adams family in his rack for thirty five bucks, and I was stubborn and didn't want to pay it. I was waiting for him to give me a discount on it or a deal or wait for him to have a special day where they got like 15, 20% off everything. And then I was going to pick it up. But then once, once they came out the series and he said, like, as soon as that series came out, someone came in and bought it. So that was a bummer. But he did have a Married with Children 3D number one in his glass sitting there. Hey, it was 10 bucks, but I've been struggling to try and collect the Married with Children stuff. Got a set of glasses. No, they don't have no arms on the side, but it's not like they're broken off or cut off. So it's weird. You usually always oh, got the little arms to stick them behind your ear, but it works out nice because if I put my reading glasses on, this pops right in there. With it, it actually does have a nice 3D flow to it if you get the image uh, lined up just right. You do have, like, characters where, like, their heads are pushing out and stuff. You can see the separation nicely. 3D pop out and it works out good with some of the reading too because a lot of the reading you can read without the glasses laid out normally but then you'll have uh, sections where the wording is pushed into the 3D style realm. I can't find a good word balloon. Basically you can see how the, all the reading is basic compared to the normal and then like the Words like that, then they got laid out in 3D. But there are word balloons where the thing they're saying is in the 3D style, like right there. And I don't know if there's a reasoning behind it, really, for what they're saying and stuff. But I was happy to pick this up. Basically, it's a story about Peg wanting to buy a couch, Peggy, and Al not wanting her to spend money on anything. And she sits there and searches the newspaper for an easy job she could pick up. And she 
finds a couple jobs that mention about real simple, real easy work. And she finds one that's babysitting. And I mean, pig's not a babysitter. Pig's not a housewife. Not good for any of that, that style work or stuff that she has to do. But uh, she ends up getting this job and the person drops off their evil little kids. And while she's taking care of the kids, it ends up being a week long that she has to take care of the kids. And we find out that the person that placed the ad was a nanny for these kids. And she placed the ad just to get rid of the kids because they're evil. And she dumps them off on Peg. And then she goes off to some island on a vacation. It's just funny how they played that out, and it was a good story. I liked it. And then we got Ninja Funk Bolo's Playground. I this is the first thing I've read from the Ninja Funk world. I was curious about it because it definitely has some interesting looks to it and stuff. Here's a example of the Ninja Funk cover with all the different characters and stuff and it just looked really interesting to me i wanted to see where it was going to go i like it because it's got art by alex regal david mack kevin eastman boss logic tyler kirkham crease david nakayama and more and it's just some of my favorite artists are in there working this and i am a big fan of david mac and you throw kabuki in there and this we get some teasers in this story that take us to some interesting character uh possible storylines that might pop up in the near future but we basically get this one parodies off a lot of back to the future we have The Bolo character, and then he's got a cat. And he got, he's got like a backpack and has kind of robotic and crossed with a normal cat. Uh, we don't get a ton of stuff from the cat yet in this storyline, but he does have a big role to play in what happens later on. We have like realm warping abilities in here or they can just uh, they talk about these strings, these timeline strings that you can jump onto and link to and then go through different timelines. And it sounds like a lot of people use the different timelines to go back or forward in time and then they just steal items that they know are valuable and then use them to make money so they can keep time jumping or realm not really time jumping realm jumping i guess or i don't know it is time stream related so it does have that also in here but i don't i'm not sure where it's going If I, don't, I never, haven't read the original storyline, so I don't know how it's crossing over from the Ninja Funk world. I don't know how big the Ninja Funk world is. But we got one character that he keeps calling. He's got a TV for a head. And our uh, Bolos character, our wolf character, I should say. I don't know. If Bolos Playground is a place. And our... Character wolf with wolf head, I forget his name, but it's some type of wolf related laser wolf, I think, is what they call him. But he keeps calling this character Marty McFly, and he does have the McFly style. And he does at one point go to get a hoverboard 
from Marty McFly during the movie making and gives them his newer shoes that actually lace up that they came out with a couple of years ago and traded him that for what he does with the hoverboard and everything and just yeah but it basically takes them where they're working their way into just trying to profit make enough money to keep jumping and when they do we get they find out that there's only one jump left for a recharge and if that recharge is used it might wipe out the world we don't know the scientist doesn't know for sure what's going to happen once that last recharge is used i don't know where other people get their recharges from so there's got to be other places to recharge your jumping machine ability thing but yeah i i liked it uh I don't know why it says episode five variant and then number one. I'm guessing maybe the uh, Ninja Funk world went four issues and then this came out next. I don't know. And that would be nice if they did do something like that with a timeline or any type of ongoing story that jumps into different character stories and all that other shit. So if you ever wanted to read the original story and get it nicely in the actual timeline of the story, how it's laid out, instead of trying to research and figure out what character stories you gotta find to read it, to read, to keep up with the, the ongoing story. If they did something like that, where it's like, okay, this is the fifth one, and the tenth, and ninth, and whatever. <clears throat> that way, if you bought them or, or searching for them, that would be an easy way to get the ones you wanted. I'd like to see comic companies start doing it because everybody's doing the big yearly event and those events always end up jumping through all the different characters storylines and all that it's like right now blood hunt i'd love to get on but i'm just gonna wait until one big book has everything in it and that way i don't have to try and find everything which i should have done with marvel zombies but i picked and pecked at marvel zombies and i've got probably a good 80 percent of the story collected so far but i don't know what which ones i definitely need i'm sure i could research it and figure it out but it's like we had marvel zombies marvel zombies like re reborn or revisited it's like they kept kept bringing new storylines into that realm so it just gets so confusing if you want to actually follow the whole storyline it would be nice to have something like that so i'm curious i'm definitely gonna look into that ninja funk world after it's out there for a while i'm probably wait and just get the trade of ninja funk and then see what other side stories they got we got stuff of nightmares sleigh ride from rl stein I can actually say <laughs> I wish R.L. Stein would have been around when I was a kid. But uh, but a lot of EC style horror stories I've been reading, comics, uh, other horror comics I've been reading lately are pretty light handed. And this one's pretty heavy-handed. I was surprised how in-depth they that R.L. Stein goes with the murders and stuff in the storyline. So I liked it. It's a story about Santa Claus, a Santa that has mental issues, constantly talking to himself, hearing two other Santas tell him what to do, and uh, we end up seeing some people get killed, and. Then the cops go for a try and hunt down Santa Claus, and he's he likes and he's got rats in the place where he lives. He's got rats all over, so he uses the rats in his thievery and the burglary and the murders 
and don't want to give too much of it away, but we get a couple uh, investigators that he tries to take out and stuff, and they hunt him down, or other police are hunting him down, and kids everywhere are just being disappointed when they do run into him. His job at a as a Santa Claus that he did for like ten years gets cut this the year that he does this stuff and he gets all disappointed about that and just has to try and figure out where he's gonna find his next way to torture families and <laughs> be able to hunt people down but he's losing his Santa job because their toy department pretty much went away and their business is pretty much closing down so he gets a little irritated about that and things happen and yeah I feel like some a story about a mentally deranged Santa Claus that has a couple voices in his head that, <laughs> that just goes on a killing spree and stuff that one's for you, but I definitely it's from Boom Studios, R.L. Steins, Pius Bach, and Francesco Segalia, or Segila. Uh, yeah, I was very surprised for it being. I mean, I, I it's young adult like that, but it just it seemed pretty intense for children style horror. Uh, you'd think R.L. Steins, it would just be a little more light-handed. But yeah, I never really don't know what I've checked out other than maybe something that was on a free comic book day or something like that from R.L. Stein. I feel like there's one other holiday-style one I read. But yeah, I'm going to have to check out more of those. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Then our final one, we got Thundercats 2 and 3. We enjoyed our Thundercats 1, so when I was up, up at a friend's shop, he had issue 2 and 3, so I'm like, I'm going to grab those and get a little deeper into the storyline and find out more about this young Lionel that all of a sudden grows into an adult in the cryo chamber or whatever, the sleeping chamber in the ship. When they traveled, and he comes out full-grown adult when he was put in as a kid. And I was, when I reviewed that on the Crimson Color Comic Club, I mentioned I loved that series when I was younger. But never, never remembered that with Lionel being young and then instantly becoming an adult. I just remember all the characters being about the same age. And, uh, so I sat there and we were talking about it at the shop with Kevin and, uh, he's got the whole series on DVD. He's like, if you want, you can borrow it. He's like, yeah. in the first, like first disc or the first episode, they, that's part of the storyline where he is young and then ages fastly in the there. And that's why he's kind of got that little childish attitude throughout the storyline, I guess. But yeah, so I thought it was something new they were playing with, but yeah, they, they did a good job with it. Now that I know what's up, I do want to still watch the series. We got Declan Shelby, Drew Moss, and a variety of other people with covers and stuff. There's like a ton of covers that will be out for this, but I got Lionel just dealing with trying to comprehend everything that's going on with the aging and the new world and what him trying to think about figure out his powers and stuff and breaks the uh sword the thundera sword 
and ends up able to still use the jewel on the sword when he puts it through his face and says the things, things still happen. He can still see into the future and stuff like that through the sword. But we're going to have to figure out what's up, if they can fix this or not. And uh, we have Mumra that is still somewhere that we don't know for sure. Uh, we have, I can't think of there. I think it's, I can't think of the head character's name. They don't, I don't even think they mentioned it in these two issues yet. But the mutants, mutants, characters, kind of like frog, frog human style looking things. We're seeing more about them and that they have a ship that landed also on here. And in that ship, find a Thundaren girl that is on there and Lionel takes to her and gets very uh, defensive when anybody brings up anything about her, not wanting her to do things, not wanting her to not trusting her fully yet. But, uh, <laughs> thing I was really happy about is a character that appeared in the third issue. A character that if you watch the series we all know and love, but we get Snarf. Snarf, Snarf. Snarf is back. Snarf's made his appearance. So happy to see that because I was kind of curious. We weren't seeing him around in the first place, but here's that nail and that they found the background there and Lionel just kind of like goes off on Panthera and stuff and Shatera battles Panthera because Panther gets mad all that stuff and she's trying to put him in check and he's trying to put Lionel in check and at the same time we got the Mutants and Mumbra that are causing issues and the story's going to work its way into a battle here pretty soon. And I'm assuming they're going to find, find the, what they need for closure and stuff and decide that this is their new planet. They're going to make it work. Hopefully there are some things we're seeing in the background about this planet that could cause a lot of problems, a lot of danger for our characters, and uh, yeah, I, I'm liking this. I don't know, don't know if I'm gonna keep pre-ordering it or anything like that since I only pre-ordered the first one to get the sketch cover. But uh, I'm thinking this is one that I'll just pick up at comic shops as the story goes. And I'll decide from there how long I'll stick on it and whether or not I'll just wait for trades eventually. Because I have a feeling this one's going to go for, I would think, a good 12 to 24 issues. But from what I know, the series ran for a while. But, yeah. That was a nice little stack. Uh, If you like the videos where I show off stuff that I pick up and stuff like that, you might want to check out Rigamortis86, I believe it is. I gave him a shout out a few episodes ago, but uh, yeah, I've been checking out his YouTube and yeah, lots of fun videos and then he does editing on his videos at least I still can't figure out my video editor he, he puts 
all kinds of little things into his videos that pop up that are fun. Check those out if you want some more uh, videos of that style. Uh, he's got, he talks about a lot of, he's got a lot of history on the creators and stuff like that. And he likes getting into a lot of the oddball independence, valiance and stuff like that. Comics. Uh, a lot that I will be talking about here and there, but not big on the collections and it's like I'm budgeting right now into Ninjack and stuff like that and uh, we'll get into more of them. I have quite a few of them in my back piles but I just haven't read them yet so I'm curious if I'll get into the storylines. There's a few I did definitely wanted to jump into. He also gets some cool and interesting toys and collectibles that he picks up so he's also a person that kind of like watches those special areas at target and stuff it's like target if you're looking for toys yeah you got the toy section but the fun toys you got to go back behind the electronics behind the cds and dvds back where the tvs are and there's usually a section of Toys that are just thrown together back there. Some of the boxes damaged and all that stuff. But they're more of the adult style. Uh, comic book related toys. Not adult toys. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I've only checked out a handful of his videos so far. But I've enjoyed everything I have. So check that out. Uh, keep following Crimson Color Comic Club. Great review. Subscribe. Tell a friend. Help us out. Uh, give us those likes. And follow, check out and follow Crimson Color Comic Club. And I will get back with more goodness sometime soon. So keep checking us out and see what we have to offer and what we pop up. In our future episodes with, I can't think of anything new, new that's coming out. A new style episode or anything that's coming. Well, actually there is. I'm going to be doing a Magic Gathering unpackaging of some boosters. Just to make a little episode out of it. Because I like to Magic Gathering cards once in a while, so. Check that out if you're into those, and we will get back with more of these soon. Bye.